why is it snowing good morning youtube now i just got a new monitor and it's like a productivity work from home monitor something i'd like to recommend for those who work from home now i don't know if i want this to go on my condo desk setup or on my girlfriend's condo desk setup she might use it a lot more than me but she doesn't like when i change her things so yeah been using the samsung lately guys it's been like three weeks you guys have to love montreal weather literally it was snowing and now it's sunny snow sun snow sun yo the amount of people that have been asking me for a condo tour is insane it's coming i promise you guys but some things have to like yet to be finished and stuff for now we've got this bad boy here now i don't know if i'm going to be putting this here or there but for those who work from home i think this is a great alternative i just had to go get another knife in the kitchen i really need to order another knife from GrooveMate because those are pretty nice let's see okay so pink foam all right there you go Okay, so this is a 27 inch monitor and more than anything, if you're gonna rock something like this, I recommend either getting two of them or just rock it with your laptop. Let's see. And the reason I say budget is just because of the amount of features this has. Uh, let's start with the cables display port. We have HDMI and we have USB-C. Power cord, no break, just goes directly into the monitor. The stand, let's get all these parts here. Let me show you. Arm, base, and then I guess this goes in the back. Let me actually take a look at what this is. I've never seen this before on another monitor. I guess this is like a bracket, interesting. Now here, this is probably just the base. Yeah, it's a nice base. Then I guess just like the arm itself. This is probably the easiest monitor unboxing I've ever done. I just want to go back to the monitor. I think the most important thing for me, like it's a deal breaker, is if the monitor doesn't have VESA mounting points. This one does, so that's great. And the last thing I guess are the manuals. Asus and just ProArt. Wait, I'm actually curious to see what's in here. Let's see. Oh, this is nice. Welcome to the Asus ProArt family. And I guess a quick setup guide. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to setting up monitors, it's usually nothing too complicated. This one in particular did come with something I've never seen prior. This sort of VESA mount locking mechanism. I think it's part of Ace's new environmental approach where they are trying to reduce shipping weight and use recycled paper for packaging, which is all around environmentally friendlier it's like a bracket that goes into the arm and then you can just simply tighten it down with this little lever right here and that works heck as long as this whole arm fits in the vesa bracket that's all i care about now the monitor by itself is actually super light at around 8.9 pounds of course with the whole arm and the base those nine pounds become 12.75 pounds the base is super easy to mount you just gotta make sure you screw it in properly but overall yeah on paper this pro art monitor is actually pretty awesome for the price the stand it comes with is actually pretty nice and looks really clean just note that it's not metal but rather plastic pretty much like all around and that very much includes the arm an arm that delivers a total height adjustment of around 130 millimeters as well as a feature of around minus 30 degrees to 30 degrees as well as a nice tilt feature from minus 5 degrees to 23 degrees and this tilt feature is something that allows you to set up total pivot adjustment from 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees so you can rock this thing vertically in terms of ports there's quite a lot including a 15 watt usb-c port and a 3.2 usb-a port controlled by this nice set of front buttons but of course that isn't everything like the amazing thing about this monitor all lives behind with the usb ports in the bottom paired with these two usb ports aces delivered 
the ability to have a built-in hub. We've also got two HDMI 2.0 ports, two display ports with one being able to daisy chain another monitor, one USB-C 96 watts port, and a earphone jack. All the way at the bottom, we've got a power switch and a simple power outlet with no brick required. Oh, and if you are like me and you just rather VESA mount your monitors, note that this arm is actually a quick release. But look, if you like this stand, note that it is about nine inches in width. The arm itself measures about 14.5 inches in height and the length of the base is around eight inches. Now, the way I went about testing this monitor was on my girlfriend's desk. I completely removed her LG Ultra Gear Gaming monitor, unmounted it from her VESA arm, prepped this one and simply mounted it i wanted her to have it for the week and see how as a cpa she would like it but first i had to do my own tests okay so design wise the monitor is actually phenomenal for the price it's packed with a bunch of features that can make work a lot easier to get into and your desk setups a lot cleaner i will say if you are someone that works in business hr engineering sales this type of monitor might be a bit too premium for you and the term budget might not apply that much but if you are in marketing and software development maybe a graphic designer a photographer a videographer the benefits you get with something like this is actually pretty good this here's a 27 inch monitor it has nice small bezels with a nice minimalist chin the back of it as you guys saw it's all plastic with an internal aluminum plate that's thin lightweight and just supposedly helps with cooling performance like i showed you guys prior we have a nice front button design which i appreciate this makes it easier to access quick adjustments especially if you are thinking of rocking dual screens just to be clear, imagine two monitors with interface buttons like the one on my Gigabyte display. Do all these together and the left monitor buttons become a pain to access. On the left side of the monitor, we've got an extension of the hub with a couple of USB ports. And so with all of these ports and a well thought out design to keep the cost low, we still get a thin, lightweight monitor that's actually 30% thinner with a 33% smaller base compared to its predecessor. It's nice and it's well built, but if you are looking for something to replace the Apple Studio display, this is not it in terms of design. When it comes to the panel, it's a 27 inch 4K display, meaning we're getting about 163 pixels per inch. Generally, the higher the PPI, the better the clarity and the sharpness. And since this is a 27 inch panel, unlike my 45 inch OLED gaming monitor, you can't really pixel peep as the pixels are well condensed. It's an IPS panel with a matte anti-glare screen surface and a 1000 to 1 static contrast ratio. So the monitor's contrast performance to the naked eye is actually quite good. I wish I had the tool to properly measure the difference between blacks and whites with a backlit at its lowest possible setting, but I do not. So like always, take these numbers with a grain of salt. I can only give you feedback on what my eyes can see. And I can definitely see that the colors on the display are so much better than on my gaming monitor. You see, this monitor here is Kalman Verified. Not only was this calibrated out of the box to ensure that it delivers excellent color quality, but it's also a certification that is supposed to deliver a proper white color gamut and 100% sRGB. Keep in mind that if this mode is not calibrated, your sRGB colors will differ from other sRGB colors from other monitors. So the fact that we get calibrated colors out of the box is quite perfect. Most people that don't really rely on colors for work will find sRGB a lot more color accurate and less saturated. If you look at the spectrum, it represents about 33% of the color curve. At 100% calibration, it can be an excellent choice for most people that, I don't know, navigate the web, write text, use office apps, chats, take video conferencing calls, and whatnot. Plus, plus, there's just one thing I wanted to add. Let me go into the menu. Let me show you the palette right here. I cannot change the brightness. I like, I can't make it brighter. And that is something that it sort of bothers me because it's not that bright. Note that I am beside a massive window. So that plays a role. If I go right back into the preset and Adobe RGB mode, you'll see how much brighter it gets. Like it's a lot brighter, a lot better, but the colors are a lot more saturated compared to sRGB mode, which you guys will see.
When it comes to the white color gamut, Asus claimed that we are getting a 99% DCI-P3 and 99% Adobe RGB gamut. What does this mean? Well, for starters, MacBooks support DCI-P3 as their default color space on their screen. So the monitor can sort of align to the colors of those on the MacBook. Now, theoretically, both of those color spaces are great for things like UI design, Photoshop for people in marketing, for example, Lightroom for photographers, and even people in videography that use softwares like Premiere and DaVinci. With this in mind, notice that accurate white color gamuts only properly work in graphical editors and some good picture viewers. Technically, everything is sRGB off the bat. Usually a lot of programs tend to ignore ICC profiles like games, for example. But if you end up doing color related work, you'll notice how beautiful the colors can be. Like just notice the rich yellows and oranges on the monitor while I'm editing my pictures. The colors look really nice and from the naked eye, they do look good, especially when this monitor is paired with its native preset. When it comes to HDR though, this year is set to be display HDR 400. Now, most monitors nowadays market themselves with HDR and while well, sometimes they are decent, other times they are just horrible. On this monitor particularly, because it has display HDR 400, it's not really supposed to be good. Whatever I'm about to say, please take it with a grain of salt because I don't have the proper measuring tools, but this looks better than most display HDR 400 monitors out there. The easiest way I was able to at least test the peak white levels was by using the display HDR tool and I visually compared the display HDR test tool HDR white versus the notepads SDR white. The difference off the bat in real time is quite big so I know HDR works for a fact. Overall, we get brightness levels of around 350 nits in SDR and 417 nits in HDR. So yes, it's not true HDR at 1000 nits, but it qualifies its standard. And this includes OK Global Dimming, which they call Dynamic Dimming. I ran a HDR local dimming test with their Fast Dynamic Dimming recommended for Display HDR and well, it works. You can definitely see how the dimming zones output different brightness levels, but it seems to me like this is edge lit HDR, which some may think it's completely worthless and others might think that in some case scenarios and games, it can be an improvement for the price considering this is a color accurate IPS panel that runs at 60 Hertz and has great viewing angles. The panel with the small test I actually ran is actually pretty solid. I just wish that companies would like stop playing this whole HDR game with these type of panels. Don't get me wrong, some look mediocre and others look horrible, but instead of promoting it, I think they just like shouldn't mention it at all. I also recommend that if you find 27 inches to be too small and you like to rock a single monitor, take a look at their 32 inch model instead. Now, remember when I said that a monitor like this can keep your setup minimal? The reason why is because they included a USB-C hub that does it all, as well as a multi-display feature. Now, what does all of this jargon mean? Essentially, this one port is able to supply your laptop with 96 watts of power, the ability to display signal, output sound through a couple of two watt speakers, allow data transfers, and so on. Not only do both USB-A ports in the back work for things like a mouse and a keyboard, but the two front ports with type A and type C connection can deliver easy access for things like charging a device, connecting a hard drive and whatnot. So now imagine if you were to rock two of these displays with daisy chain. I wish I had a second monitor to actually test this, but essentially it'd be cool to daisy chain with display port and then connect your MacBook to one of the monitors via USB-C. Although I'm aware that the monitor hub that connects to your laptop is the only hub that would work. As for the on-screen display, it's actually even cleaner compared to the one my OLED Ultrawide has. Don't get me wrong, I love that one and it's one of my favorite ones, but this Asus monitor has an OSD that's more geared towards non-gamers. If you click on the little joystick, the quick settings will actually pop up. Here you can choose to access the menu, exit, energy savings mode, the brightness, your output, the scaling settings, and power. All of it with the help of the buttons that correspond to the little icons besides their labels. Now, if we dive a bit more into the menu, you'll find all those quick settings and a lot more. However, this time you can simply navigate the OSD with the help of the little joystick. 
as you guys probably see this monitor is a monitor that likes its color spaces it comes with a bunch of presets that were calibrated at factory presets like native srgb mode adobe rgb rec 2020 dcip3 dcom rec 709 and even hdr most of these are presets that will allow you to change some settings within palette things like the brightness contrast saturation black levels and whatnot the image tab delivers settings like the sharpness for example among other things of course this monitor also has a pip and pbp feature i'm guessing it comes in handy for things like connecting a camera on the side for example there's also a quick fit setting which again it plays a bit with aspect ratios adding rulers center markers this is where you start realizing that this monitor can be heavily used by cinematographers more than anything the rest of the settings include the input signal tab, the settings tab where I was able to play with dynamic dimming, and the shortcuts tab if you'd like to change those. I'm excited to see how this will evolve on her desk. I'm not sure if she's going to want to keep this long term because of the size, but I'm sure over time she's going to appreciate the crispiness and the quality of the colors. Because she's an accountant, it might not be the number one monitor recommendation for those within a budget and those particular needs, but it definitely makes her life a bit easier because of the extra amount of ports she now has and the accurate sRGB. At 27 inches, I'm sure she's going to want to go back to 32 inches, which is why I either recommend you buy two 27 inch monitors, or if you don't mind it, rock this one with the laptop display. Asus also offer a 32 inch panel in case you want to avoid getting a $1,200 gaming panel like the one she had. I think these type of monitors are a lot more worth it for those who like good picture quality and don't mind the low frequencies. Essentially, they can be good for everyone that works from home, but more specifically, people in the creative field. Like always, I suggest you take a look at other reviews, buy from places that have a good return policy, and always test things for yourselves. I hope I've introduced you guys to something new worth checking out. I will be releasing a really cool video on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that one. Talk soon, guys. Take care.